How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I've got the gameplay and review video on this thing, the Fem 37AT, which yeah, is a bit of a uh, terrible name. I'll have to uh, think of another name for it. But yeah, we'll send it around the course, see how it uh, stacks up. So engine wise, it's got this new one, I'll be honest I can't read the codes, oh SBR6250R2, whatever that means. Uh, it's S on the power, not S+. Plus. Personally, I'd like it if it was S+. Plus. Uh, the gearbox advanced special. The suspension there is, it's only stock, but it does sit pretty high, so that's actually not too bad in that situation. I originally went from those tyres, like the one up from the bottom, but then it said that the off-road capability on these is uh, better. So, yeah, even though it's pretty vague descriptions. Uh, engageable diff. Sadly, it's not permanent diff, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest, because... I think overall the truck would feel a lot better if it had uh, diffs permanently on. Or obviously the option to. Uh, yeah, the snorkel goes right up to the top of the roof and it's at the back of the cab, which is about the best location, I reckon. And uh, all the equipment you can add on, it's got the big crane, which I like. It's got a roof rack. It's got this four slot, um, what's it called? A float body, it's saying. But yeah, four slots of cargo, which effectively makes this like another option besides the uh, twin steer for being able to carry four slots of cargo without needing any trailer but then you can have a trailer on this which is nice because that now exceeds what the uh, the twin steer is able to do and in theory you could then road train two of these so now you've got like, what like 16 slots of cargo uh, without having to take say a couple of uh, eight slot trailers and then yeah or it's got the three slot um, things you can add on that will fit the crane as well uh, all the roof stuff, it's just like, yeah, lights. There's like a big air spoiler thing at the top. Uh, there's a roll cage thing all around the truck. And then these bottom bumpers. Bumper 1 and 3 are basically the same. One's just got a, uh, like that front bumper guard thing on it. I prefer the one that's sort of black coloured because it just looks pretty nice. The lights look uh, pretty cool. And then, yeah, exhausts. I go for the stock one just because it squirts it out to the side and it should if I don't think this thing smokes I didn't even think about it all night so yeah it can't be that bad colors there's no uh, like custom ones as such looks pretty good in black and white I like both of them it's quite a nice clean color some don't look so good um, yeah that purple one looks good I like that as well this one if anyone went to some kind of rollerblading facility in the 90s or laser quest something somewhere in the building was painted these colours. It could have been a planet, could have been a truck, could have been an animal, could have been an alien, could have been anything, but something was these colours. And yeah, I remember them. <laughs> Back in the 90s, that was before rollerblading was gay. Um, yeah, the green one, I, the green's alright, but it's got the little orange stripes on it, which I actually prefer it as just green. And then, obviously, yeah, the white with the little, uh, sorry, the orange with the little white uh, lines going uh, along the cab. Yeah, looks-wise, I think it looks pretty cool. The fuel tanks sit nice and high, so it doesn't really catch with them. But you can see already, like, I'm doing the articulation, and it can barely even move, like, and I'm on a flat surface in a yard. So, yeah, which we'll get to a bit later as well. Inside looks pretty cool. It seems to have a bed and some kind of spare bed for prostitutes, which is pretty good thinking. Uh, the mirror, I, I mean, just me in general, I can barely see it from here. Funnily enough, though, you can because you wiggle the articulation. You can in theory move your mirrors <laughs> but I don't know how often that will come in handy. Um, yeah looking out here I end up removing, oh no it's, I've left it in in this footage, I remove the like save your roll cage over it because as I just looked out the back then um, I, the, like the ladder's in the way, not that it matters but it is what it is. Sorry I was just talking over the Hallman. It's not the best, not the worst. Um, yeah, that's about all that can be said really. It's not the squeakiest, most annoying one, but it could be better. Revs, it looks like it sits at about 550, and it revs really quick up to 2000, but I don't necessarily think that plays out, which I don't think it always does. I like to see whether they rev quick or not, because some trucks rev slowly, but yeah, I don't know if it always plays out that like the quick revving stuff actually builds its revs quicker. The game just seems to make it up as it goes along, really. Um, yeah, trailer store, you all the pretty normal ones, you all the tow along ones, and then it can only have a saddle high, so you haven't got a saddle low. They seem to have added in a new trailer. Um, it's the same as the, like the five slot wide bed, whatever it is, saddle high one, but it's just got three axles instead of two, which, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if it'll make that much difference in the scheme of things, but 
the options there. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a random one to add as a new trailer. Uh, like turning out the garage, obviously, once you start getting near to full articulation, it tries to force you to go to full articulation. So, like, it's quite difficult to say keep it on at three quarters. It either wants to snap you around or it just naturally starts trying to straighten itself up. But you see, when I'm driving along, I was in fifth gear and it was fine as I'm coming out of the garage and all the rest of it, but just in the mud, it. I noticed vehicles, particularly like the Advanced Special, never really used to do this as much. But even though it still stays in fifth, it kind of bleeds so much of the speed, and it's very low in the fifth gear. Kind of, you can tell it's thinking about uh, jumping down and driving through here. Ironically, not having diffs kind of helps and hinders it. Going through there, if it had diffs on, it would just apply sort of pretty equal power to all the wheels and cruise through there quite comfortably. I reckon. But because it didn't have diffs on, even though I got really slow at some points, I think the fact that it was able to just light a few of the wheels up at the rear particularly, and bleed a bit of the uh, the power that way, it just kind of managed to stay in the high long enough. And uh, Yeah, but you can see, I mean, this hill as a prime example, it couldn't really crawl up there, it's not even doing a great job really in high-low. Compared, like, there's plenty of other vehicles, uh, even advanced special vehicles that will go up there a hell of a lot more comfortably than that. Um, in auto, it's just a little bit slow and fiddly. I think I end up trying uh, high low again, but obviously the speeds are pretty similar. And yeah, this for me is just too slow for this kind of truck. And if it had diffs on, it'd be a different story, really, because right now I'm bleeding all the speed, which is why I went to low range diffs on. You can see, I mean, if anything, the speed did pick up, but the fact that it's in the low ranges, like, yeah, if it had the diffs always on, it'd be a lot more uh, workable along just, yeah, roads like that. As for killing the trees, it killed the first two, but it did jar the steer around. I I end up killing the other trees on the farm a little bit later on, so I don't always use that footage as much now. Uh, cutting through here, it did stay in high gear going through here, and then was it somewhere around now? I did a little bit of left-hand steer, and it suddenly bit right over to the left, and I couldn't steer out of it in time. Even though, yeah, pretty much any other truck with normal steering. That, uh, well, it, it wouldn't happen because the rocks, like, don't snap your steering round or anything. It just, um, well, yeah, it doesn't really doesn't do anything. It bounces your truck around, but articulation in this game is the only form of steering that kind of gets affected as you bounce across different things. Running over these rocks, for the most part, I didn't actually manage to make it, like, get any damage or anything. I, I think there was once or twice throughout the entire night I might have hit a rock and got a bit, but for the most part it's just never really going to be an issue. For a start this thing rarely goes fast enough to take damage over rocks really. It's always probably going to be just be going slow enough to do some kind of gradual climb over them. Hit the anti-terrorist barricade. It took a little bit of damage. It was me that steered into it. Um, it didn't actually like force me sort of snap my steering around or anything, which I suppose I didn't really expect it to. You take damage from them, but they don't really have much weight to them, they just kind of, for whatever reason, once they go under your suspension they start ruining that. And along here, so this is a few things, or a few places where this truck shines, and like, cutting over here is, uh, I'd say, at least in the order of like, super mud normally. And uh, yeah, this thing, well, I believe I'm still in fifth gear, but if I'd gone into like, low ranges, it obviously would have gone along pretty comfortably uh, with the diffs on in the low ranges. High gear, I reckon, would have got over there. Yeah, overall, that's like pretty respectful, and that's what I found through the night is there's a lot of places this truck suffers, but then every now and then, in like some of the deep, muddy areas, it's more the deep, swampy, muddy areas. If it's got like a hard surface, if there's a lot of like rocks or a river bed, this thing seems to struggle quite a lot. Um, but yeah, it's the sort of boggy, swampy things where it doesn't seem to do too bad. Now, I ran the first line of trees over, and then Ages later, I came back and I'm pretty certain I'd reloaded the map and everything, but it hadn't loaded up half them farm trees for some reason, so I don't know if I've killed them forever. It'd kind of be funny in a way if I have. Uh, yeah, next on to Northport though, I think I've not really messed up, but going through this snow, I think normally I drive through it in auto and then go into high gear. I went into high gear a bit early there, but to be fair, just the speed of this thing in general, I don't think it would have made too much difference. Probably would have been better to get out of high at that point. Uh, yeah, they're fighting a little bit. I mean, it will get over those barriers. It's certainly tall enough, but as you can see there, once I got the first two axles over, that last one, 
It's a bit weird, like, that's what I mean, a bit more power would be nice. It's... There's obviously some amount of power here, but for whatever reason, feeding not just six wheels, but six very big wheels, it seems to, uh... Sort of, yeah. Feels like it's got some flat spots going on in there. It did manage to climb over those rocks, though, once I went in diffs. Without diffs, it could, couldn't even make its chin get up the rocks or anything, but once the diffs are on it did actually climb, which yeah, is pretty decent most vehicles don't actually make it over those rocks normally I drive on the road here but this thing, it was just in the end quicker to, quicker to uh, drive this way and see if it can climb over the barrier, which it could started swinging the wheels around, I thought it was then going to catch the front on those rocks but by the skin of my teeth we uh, made it out of there that's another annoying thing as well, because you haven't got the diffs permanently on, you can see that, like, telling me it's about to damage the diffs. Yeah, that's just a pain in the ass in general, because vehicles that don't have diffs, if you've gone into the diffs, it's because there's not enough traction and everything going on without the diffs. And then as soon as you get traction and build up to speed, usually the game then starts moaning that you've got your diffs on. And it's like, yeah, it's already enough of a disadvantage having optional diffs over permanent, but then on top of that you get the thing where it keeps trying to force you to get back out of them. It's like a bit of a, uh, a double whammy. Uh, yeah, cl uh, that little snow bank, by the way, back there, this thing, again, is very good in snow. It's, yeah, snowy maps is probably going to be, if anything, like, where it uh, shine. Possibly, well, again, relatively speaking, I'd also say, like, you know, the Zik 605R does extremely well in snow, etc. But nonetheless, as this vehicle seems to for me, been struggling a little bit in these uh, like Phase 12 maps. It's nice to take stuff back to the original maps because, yeah, I just feel not only a bit more familiar. But yeah, I've already taken so many other trucks over the various terrains that I have a much uh, better idea of what's what. Uh, yeah, in the end, I couldn't climb up this. I even went back and took the front bumper off the truck just so I could like get a bit more flush up against the wall, but. It just couldn't climb up, so I went in reverse. I was able to just about get it over. I had to use a bit of winch to bump the tyres up, but as far as like physically getting over, a bit of a long and drawn out way. That's roughly the balancing point as I was dragging it over, uh, over like the yeah around the fuel tanks. So it's obviously got some decent weight in like the rear axles and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, you see like there though, when I got over the wall facing backwards, just to turn round, pretty much a 180, but where I already was. It took bloody ages, this thing is a nightmare if you just want to turn round and face the other way. Uh, going through the trees, it did pretty well, there's not really a lot that can catch on this vehicle, but it is very tall and all the rest of it. But yeah, there's not really many things, or too many, that are like sticking out that catch on the stuff. I think it was the rear tyres that got caught here. Once I kind of wiggled around, I think I did diffs at some point, but yeah, just... It wasn't really like the front branches that was trying to get my cab through. I think it was a tree like deep in the uh, the woods back there that kind of snagged on a wheel. And you see like there, I couldn't steer out of it in time. I knew this was going to happen, but I was kind of, that's what I was doing it to prove the point. I'm trying to steer to the left, but once I start steering right, it at least did have enough to do that, which I was kind of pleased and surprised about, because I remember I've had situations like that before with articulated vehicles where they just can't lift their own nose off the ground once you're like at that angle. But yeah, this thing uh, managed to. But you see, even climbing up there, it started veering off to the right and I was trying to steer out of it, but yeah, that's just, it's the running theme you're going to get really with articulation is it's going to try and pull your steering one way and it definitely takes a lot longer to get out of it than... Again, it doesn't even happen with normal wheeled vehicles, but even if you, say, accidentally applied too much steering, you can, uh, yeah, steer out of it a lot easier. And this is one thing I found weird, like with the articulation. Once I was here in this yard, and I've got a full loaded trailer, and I'm now turning, it's letting me reach, like, full lock on it. And I don't specifically know why. I don't know if it's because it's snowy in this yard. Maybe it was a little bit easier to, like, skid the front tyres around. As for turning, I was also pleasantly surprised with this because I did give it a little bit of a better chance I, I already pretty much had it at full lock I went into the low ranges and I was blipping the throttle but yeah so say normally because what I used to do was like I'd floor it and then steer 
and then I'd usually keep it pinned as well. So if I'd done that, it definitely would have been a three-point turn. However, I was kind of assuming this thing would be, you know, getting on for like a five-point turn. So the fact that once I went really slow and blipped the throttle and all the rest of it actually made it round in one, yeah, that's uh, pretty decent. And for this one, I've brought this new three-axle flatbed thing. Again, it's the only thing I can really see that's different. You know, like the little, I know it's not a gooseneck, but that front little deck of the trailer for whatever reason is a tiny bit narrower on this you can see it doesn't quite make it to the edges of like the fatter rear bit of the trailer but yeah I don't even know specifically why they've added it but thought I'd give it a go uh, going around here see again like this kind of stuff with snow because it's got very big tires the nice thing with big tires instead of having to wade through stuff like even now in the snow I'm still got tall enough tyres that I'm driving over it like there's enough tyre so that it sort of tucks the terrain under it and by the time it's actually hitting like the bulk of your tyre yeah you're rolling over it rather than wading through it which makes this thing travel yeah pretty nicely if anything like like I say snowy maps I mean funnily enough this thing might even be relatively speaking half decent on Imandra because it pretty much forces you to go very slow on a manager anyway and then yeah once you're going slow I think this vehicle would make fairly decent progress at a slow rate but again it'll be pretty consistent I reckon in something like that I dropped the trailer off you can see to the right of the screen found a little gap there between the trailers we are running out of room I was thinking as well when I was driving along there some of these trailers are pretty much four years old <laughs> some of these trailers are ready I have to buy them school uniforms and everything um, yeah, and I got stuck, like, just as I was turning back out, I got caught on the edge of a, uh, a ramp flatbed. And again, that shows you the difference between diffs off and diffs on. I couldn't even, the truck couldn't power itself past the ramp flatbed, but then when I put the diffs on, I had enough power and just easily scraped past it. Uh, going along here, there's another inherent problem with the uh, articulation. I just clipped the edges of those ice, kind of banks riding along and uh, yeah it snapped my steering around to the right pretty quickly kept me out at the door because he wasn't in on the action uh, it was kind of alright around this corner yeah going through here again is another example of the diffs really kind of not a chance in hell without them as soon as you uh, do engage them bumps up kind of yeah that's the thing it is like a pretty night and day difference I think if this thing did have diffs permanently on it'd be a pretty damn solid vehicle obviously at least there is the fullback of them but yeah it's just everything's happening at a slower pace which I like the quicker pace because I don't know it makes it a bit more exciting and dangerous there's more chance for something to go wrong there's a bit more need to uh, pay attention and like I was saying I would like a uh, high range gearbox in this truck and uh, I think it was Justin Lynch that was saying like imagine driving this though in a high range where like the articulation snaps left and right which is right, and I agree, um, but yeah, in and of itself, that would probably make it a little bit of a uh, an interesting one to be driving flat out. Going up here, view-wise out like in first-person mode or whatever, you can see that little tree on the uh, left, that was like the left corner of the uh, windscreen. I kind of use that as my marker when I'm going up there, and yeah, none of that tree disappeared behind like the bottom of the dash, so relatively speaking, that's pretty good life. Yeah, a lot of vehicles, uh, some even just about fully cover that little tree. Going along here, hands are going around like mad one. Uh, yeah, view-wise, again, I, I was like looking around. I was just keeping an eye more now on the uh, the rev counter because this thing revs up to 2,000. And yet, as you can see, I'm driving along now and it's only revving up to like 1,000 and a half. And this is what I mean with the game. Like, it, even when you look to what stuff revs up to or how quick it does or whatever yeah the game doesn't necessarily give you that even like I mean really I want to see it revving up to 2000 in every year I just want a higher gear <laughs> each time it changes like it, yeah whereas this game I don't know I suppose it does feel like it gives you a higher gear but yeah for whatever reason like if you might have 3000 RPM on a truck but it will only give you 1700 or something weird which I can understand it ticking along at some points and working through the uh, the revs. 
and you see, like going through there, some trucks struggle through that little muddy section, and I already knew just coming around the corner, like I knew based on how this has been driving uh, previously, yeah, that it, it went through that mud very well. Like, then that's the funny thing with this. It's uh, yeah, some terrains it really does do pretty well. Going along here can be a little bit sketchy. I got a, you can see it bounced my steering a little bit. I turned a little bit too far to the left there, but that said, a normal vehicle, I was already steering right out of it, and I think with normal steering I would have got there, but obviously this thing takes a little bit uh, longer to react. You just kind of, you have to apply steering, but you have to cover distance to apply it, so yeah, other vehicles you can sit there and dry steer, and steer when you're uh, not even moving. This thing you have to move forward to help, like, the front swing round and uh, yeah that's why like if you need to turn within 10 feet that might be a uh, a bit of a struggle with this thing but again going through this snow doing very well normally I go into like high gear or something now but this thing's uh, still ticking along pretty nicely most vehicles tend to if I go in high gear now it kind of blips along where little patches along here let you go up to basically full speed in high and then you get like the super snow kicking back in and it slows you down quite a lot. Now my cab started hitting here and there's a few vehicles more recently, I remember the Derry I think was, and I kind of figured yeah it was not happening now, and then for whatever reason I just moved over a tiny bit and it suddenly let me under. There's like a weird hitbox going on that's clearly more severe than it actually like looks, but then yeah for whatever reason I snuck by under it then, and sometimes even when you get under it it'll suddenly the hitbox will like grab you and start smashing your truck into the ground and all sorts, so for whatever reason, I escaped pretty lightly there. And yeah, going through that snowy ditch, again, this thing did pretty well. It caught its chin a bit. That, if anything, is like, I think because of the length of the chassis, there's just, when you go down a hill, there's a lot of chassis behind you that's still maintaining, like, the angle of the hill. Whereas, with a shorter wheelbase, like, by the time the front of your truck is trying to go up the other side of a hill, or a ditch, should I say, your back end's already kind of in the ditch and leveled your truck out, whereas this thing's just, yeah, because it's a longer truck, takes, like, you've got more distance you need to really, like, seesaw the back end down to get the front level, so you, you do end up catching your nose a bit. So you're going through here, though, call it, like, the Devil's Mud. This is a pretty ruthless section. There's plenty of trucks that don't make it through here. There's still some that do, but again, this thing sits nice and high, big tyres, uh, low-range diffs on, ticked along pretty nicely, that's uh, yeah, one of the more comfortable trucks through there that we've got in the game really, like, I even uh, turned in, went, tried to go in pretty deep, <laughs> that's what she said of course. And yeah, going up here, again, some of the snow about now it relaxes and it's normal snow, but between like that devil's mud and where I just was, that's kind of super snow that can slow you down quite a bit, so yeah, again, in places like this it's doing alright. Bloody saving cogs, right? The uh, most inconvenient moment. I actually thought it'd kind of catch. I suppose where like the knuckle is of the articulation, but just about got away with it there. You can see that. I mean, I'm in high, and the funny thing is, it. I don't even know if it's ever kicked me out of high. I remember at some point. I don't know if it's in this video, but it's pretty simple to imagine. <laughs> I was just stopped dead, and I was still in high gear, and uh, and it wasn't even wheel spinning, but it still didn't kick me out of high. And yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know if I've actually seen it say stalling yet however when I was just climbing up that hill you can see I was practically stopped and some of the wheels are spinning some of them haven't even got enough guts to spin and it can be a little bit iffy there's like the nose test again I went on a bit of an angle that one nice thing is because it has got articulation you can create a bit more of an angle on your nose every now and then and here it was a close one a lot of vehicles do bottom out there though and I actually have to like either wiggle it around quite a lot or eventually just call it a day and go round. Uh, yeah, that one was struggling with it a little bit, got its chin, but for the most part just about made it through. So uh, over to the tipping test. And in theory, because this vehicle's quite tall, it should just do one roll and get back to its wheels. Like now, but I did kind of land a bit awkward like just the right amount of uh, angle on that front right 
wheel that it sort of helps bring me over. So yeah, I rolled like one and three quarters or whatever it was. Uh, I had a Zix just like behind me pretty much. I believe it was the one I just drove past up the hill. Uh, but it was also just a quick bit of driving with the Zix just to see how that was through these uh, snowy bits. And yeah, very good as well. So this Fem truck thing. Again, I don't know what. I might call it Frank. Yeah, call it Frank. <laughs> Frank um, is doing pretty well in the snow. But uh, yeah, Zix has always been a solid vehicle. I just it was convenient to just quickly check that this thing isn't doing amazingly well compared to other vehicles. It's good in this sort of environment. And again, even with the tippiness at slow speed, it's not bad for not tipping. As I say that, it is about to tip. But going around that corner, there's some vehicles that really don't like it. This didn't feel too bad. So climbing up here was going all right. I'm blipping the throttle a bit because I wanted to scoot over to the left. But then now I'm trying to turn out of it. It starts to tip, and I just uh, can't really fight it. And then, yeah, she rolls. And again, it carries itself over. So there is a bit of an issue with the weight. It's obviously got some weight like fairly high up in the cab, I reckon. It just helps uh, carry it over a bit. But yeah, attempt number two. And most vehicles actually drive up here without any issues really. This one, it does make it up, but there was a little bit of wheel spinning going on. A little bit of it kind of wondering which wheel it wants to uh, feed the power to. And then I did kind of catch the articulation bit on the hump of that hill. Tried to go around here. I wanted to kind of ride along the middle ridge and see if I could sort of keep my cab level. But again, the... Uh, articulation bit got caught so I sort of had to go to the left. I don't really mind, I roll quite a lot of trucks here but an attempt was made and look I phase through this tree, kind of hit it, roll through. <laughs> it shows you there can be a bit of a troll, like imagine if I stopped halfway that tree would have been like in my chassis between each sort of chassis rail. So uh, yeah, send in the goddamn horse. And it's one thing with this game like the annoying thing is, when you roll over, if I was in that fem truck, I wouldn't be able to steer at all. But say it's a normal truck, it blocks your steering once you roll over. Yet when you winch to something, even if it's upside down, it steers, which isn't always convenient. And in this case, it starts bending like a fish flapping around. Um, yeah, I dragged it up the hill, but it wasn't rolling. It was just kind of dragging towards me. So I released the winch, let it roll a bit grabbed another winch, kind of did the same thing where it sort of scooted around enough but it was just going to carry on dragging towards me, which it did, so I'd cut the footage out. Some of it had to be pretty uh, brutal on cutting some of the footage out because, yeah, it was just too long. <laughs> I know, that's what she said. Um, yeah, the video was getting on for like 58 minutes, which, to be honest, I wanted it under 50 minutes, but I just knew this is like when you're doing, or when I'm doing the gameplay and review video, um, a quick vehicle, like to get all this same footage in, say, like the original Tager, I could get all this video done in probably, yeah, say 40 minutes. But for the same footage, it takes uh, a long while, which again, I need to still do the K7M tractor. And there's a few other things. Um, but yeah, it just takes ages. And I did actually, I get this, got this footage uh, yesterday, which took me uh, pretty much all night, and then I didn't end up editing it. Uh, my mum had to uh, go to hospital and she had a bit of an operation on her lung. Um, yeah, so that was kind of on my mind a bit. And then between that and just the amount of editing that I knew I'd have to do, I even had to render the footage because I'd done 50 clips. And then I'm already back up to, I think it's like 49 clips, so yeah. Near enough a uh, 9900 clips to do this video. And then yeah, over uh, to the quarry though. And you see, going through this mud, a lot of vehicles kind of tap out and don't like this mud, or at least crawl through it very slowly. This thing, I was in high gear, I reckon it would have gone about this fast if I was in, say, fifth gear. Probably similar speed if I was in the low range. I mean, that's the thing, is like, with this gearbox more recently, is yeah, between high auto and high low, there's barely any variation between them, like speed-wise and all the rest of it. I suppose if anything, you may as well just look through whichever one uses the least fuel at the time, depending on which uh, terrain you're in. See, driving along here, it's not too bad. Like, you can hit rocks and it will yank the steering round, but 
I wouldn't say it's like a complete like epidemic of it doing it. it it's not insane for it considering like I certainly um, what vehicle was it back in the day I can't even remember off the top of my head there was one of them that used to snap left and right like an absolute nightmare but yeah this one like I say it happens but it doesn't feel like it's trying to sabotage me and wreck my driving like every two minutes uh, going down there kind of jumped down that quarry cliff it caught its uh, nose which it's like the main thing with this, even though the tyres are pretty massive and pretty close to the front of the cab there still is enough there to uh, catch its chin finally give up on trying to crawl through there in auto so we'll go into high low to cement but again though, ticking along pretty nicely, it certainly feels like it's going to get out of here I'm pretty sure there used to be some bigger fatter rocks in like that yellow square where you get the uh, these concrete slabs from so some of the uh, older gameplay and review videos do struggle a bit more in there but that being said if even if those massive rocks were there if anything this would have a fairly decent chance of climbing over them just because of the fact that it's got 71 inch tyres now going up here it's nice that turning from there it didn't try and lean over so again the tipping is not insane because there's some vehicles that just by making that turn as you go up the hill they tip over didn't uh, need the loaf to get me up the first part. Well, things were going pretty well now. The fact that it even got like where it had now, I was thinking, oh, this is actually looking pretty decent. But then it beached the trailer, which most ve most vehicles do because the trailer just beaches there. But yeah, I thought this was going to uh, just about have enough power to uh, get it over the top. Whereas it didn't. I sat here for a while. I was wiggling around. I even winched to a loaf that was in front of me. In the end, you can see I put the loaf at the back of the ramped flatbed done a winch from my truck to the loaf so I'm kind of hoovering him under the trailer which is lifting the back of the trailer up which those rails that are running along the trailer are now not digging in the uh, brow of that first quarry hill and then yeah the trailer nearly starts to tip but the loaf's goddamn professional he knows what he's doing job's a good one couldn't quite make this corner and you see like I have to roll it back quite far considering normally I wouldn't want to uh, roll it back that far at all and with normal steering I wouldn't have to but again other vehicles have started trying to tip over to the left at this point whereas this thing's yeah it's certainly planted enough I think it's when you've got a bit of speed going it and you do the articulation it's almost as if you kind of yeah just stick some weight out like quite a lot say if I'm turning right it kind of sticks a lot of weight out to the left and then yeah climbing up this hill I didn't have the highest of hopes it was sort of looking good on those quarry hills but then yeah when it kind of died once the trailer got beached even though at that point this still had all its tyres on some of the vehicles have got like a bit of an awkward angle this actually had a fairly good chance uh, yeah, so it got to about here and it couldn't really get any higher. I did actually test it out a couple of times, but obviously I haven't left all the uh, footage in. Uh, kind of, again, trying to wiggle it around left and right. Sometimes that can help, because, well, it will anyway, even like normal vehicles, but I mean, um, it physically moves the cab over like left and right. And then, yeah, just by the skin of my teeth, I was uh, able to reach one of these trees, which I kind of count that as if it can get high enough to grab one of those trees, that's kind of at least stage one of kind of getting up this hill the second time I did it though I couldn't reach the uh, trees and the goddamn horse next to me oh yeah yeah used him dug a little loaf hole dragged me up there I think is there a good example yeah like look I want to reverse and you know just get a bit of a tighter turn but with this vehicle just to reverse to get like the articulation straightened up it's already going to make the ramped flatbed want to tip so just bear in mind if you are driving up this vehicle in a ramped flatbed yeah just careful which way you go or whatever because if you want to reverse it's bad enough in normal vehicles especially with a ramped flatbed but the fact that this thing physically needs like half a truck length to a truck length 
to reverse just to be able to move your cab over to have the steering face in the opposite way. Hit the old loaf, he did a bit of a flip, but he's all good. I like the loaf where he was though, so I quit and reloaded <laughs> and came down again. So he took a bit of damage there, so it is uh, it's possible. Jumped a bit over further to the right. Dug my chin in though, kind of sprung the trailer around, spun my back end around, nearly hit the uh, Land Rover thing. The trailer finally tipped on me. Just going to be further down this hill. Uh, yeah, and then at some point I'm reversing up because I like to tip the truck here. And look, the thing is, it's barely got enough power to push the ramped flatbed backwards. And that's the weird thing, like in some, like, you know, that devil's mud, etc., in snow things pretty solid and then you get situations like this where it can barely fight its own weight like it can't push this trailer out of the way it got caught on the edge of a ramp flatbed earlier until I put the diffs on yeah eventually got it tipped although it kind of tipped quite a lot flung the trailer around which to be fair this is about as awkward as you can get really I'm kind of five eighths rolled over or whatever with a trailer kind of wrapped around in the uh, wrong direction course, I've got to send in a goddamn professional for these kind of things. Digs himself a little loaf hole. Get the trailer straightened out, that's step one. It's going pretty well if I may say so. It's kind of half wheeled the truck around. I mean look, what an absolute horse. That steering light, can he squeeze past the red loaf? Steering of a house fly, of course he can. Uh, yeah, left the winch attached because then I just wanted to head over to this side, drag the trailer over, which that bit I suppose is that's more trailer rescue than truck rescue, but it's part of it. Now, is it going to tip? <laughs> is it going to be a nightmare? So when I clip my winch to it, obviously it does the thing where it like bends the uh, articulation. And I do an edit here because one, I needed to cut down the footage. I was wiggling around for a little bit. It was slowly just pulling me, uh, pulling this truck up the hill, as you can see. Eventually, my loaf starts moving back towards it. Dug himself a pretty good hole. Um, was it? Yeah. And then in the end, it was basically, as you can see, it was dragging it up the hill, but not really tipping it again. So once I got it high enough up the hill, reverse the loaf into it. I flipped it around. Victory horn achieved. It's got them professional. It's all life. Uh, yeah, on to what's this Lake Cobb. Smash through there. Which was a quicker way out onto this ice. Uh, yeah, there's like a bit of super snow about now, which it rolls over, yeah, barely even noticing it. Some vehicles are capable of that, but some hit that super snow and they're absolutely goners. See, now this hasn't got chained. Normally that's a disaster on the ice. At least one of the ways that the articulation helps is when you're on ice in a normal vehicle and you steer it just you completely understeer and carry on going straight pretty much but obviously in this case you physically bend in the chassis so something has to point one way or the other and uh, yeah it result you get like actually a nice little drift I it, to be honest driving skidding around the uh, ice on these lakes was yeah pretty fun and cutting across this ice as well just because the vehicle like size wise I mean you think these 71 inch tires there's vehicles that we'd consider have got big tyres like the Tega Dolphin, they've got like 51 inch tyres, 20 inches less. Uh, yeah, so this thing is actually tall enough that I drove it up and down the ice and even now you can see like a big line I've sort of dredged behind me. Um, but yeah, slowly but surely, low range diffs on and all that, um, but it sits tall enough where you can kind of climb over the ice. So. I didn't uh, really get stopped by it at any point, and for the most part I don't think it will, because again the fuel tanks sit very nice and high, there's not really a lot to catch, other than the front bumper if anything. I did go for a Jeff Special, but I knew it wouldn't happen, so instead I normally use this bit of ice to attempt it, but I attempted it just before I was, I decided upon doing a nice little uh, drift instead. Uh, yeah, jumped it into the water. It's weird. I jumped it into the water on the other side, and it's as if the front started to float, which was odd. And I think it was just because the current was kind of pushing against me so hard. Um, yeah, so I tested it again, and it sank. It just, yeah, it seemed to be a bit of a weird 
anomaly. Um, crossing over the river in flooded foothills does pretty well. There's obviously rocks on the uh, riverbed here, so vehicles that really don't like climbing over rocks struggle a bit getting over there. You can see though there is a you know a bit of a lack of power going on in general until I put it in low range with diffs on, which I didn't then. But but then yeah, going through like that muddy puddle there and driving along there, it was slow but consistent. And then going up this waterfall, I actually thought it'd struggle more than it did up here. Maybe there just wasn't too many rocks around at this point. But yeah, I was already pretty happy that it got to here without really complaining that much. Although, it began in the end. But again, at least it's probably one of those things where if you're stuck on a rock, say if a rock's wedged like under your front left tyre, your articulation, you're physically wiggling the cab left to right, so you might actually be able to scoot like, you know, in fact, just there's a good example, there was a rock like under the, uh, the front left. And yeah, a bit of wiggling and juggling, but it is doable. And there's not much travel in the suspension, but at least the rear, as you can see, it got like that. As someone said, and I don't know any other name, like rocker arm suspension, so it's yeah, at least there is, it's not necessarily suspension, but at least it kind of, the axles lift up and down and climb over, say, a rock instead of making the entire chassis lift over the rock. It will actually just sort of lift the axle or the wheel over. And yeah, like I say, a little bit on the slow side, but we actually did make up here, spitting a few rocks out the back. And then yeah, as we're going along here, there's a little just view of the front some trees. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of rocks here, they see like the front tires bump over, so... All in all, uh, yeah, not terrible. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Considering it's like a hard surface and there's a lot of rocks. It's not to say it doesn't like it, it's obviously once you're bumping over rocks you've not really got a lot of traction going on, and this thing really doesn't have enough power to say feed it to the other axles, so it does slow it down in that sense. Crossing that snow there, I left that in because that's actually a notoriously ruthless bit of snow. I've crossed thousands of vehicles over there in doing these videos and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, that's one of the cases though where this vehicle just kind of bails along it quite nicely. Something like a Cat 770G would as well. And then yeah, it rolled it on its roof so it's time to send in the loaf. He heard there was a truck needs rescue and he's the type of goddamn professional to go and rescue it. I mean look at him go. What an absolute beast. Lands on his roof rack. Quick truck inspection so he can work out the most efficient way to rescue it. Uh, yeah, didn't even take a speck of damage. It's how the loaf knows how to cliff dive. It's land on your roof rack and then roll two wheels. Uh, yeah, winch kind of, you're best off winching the winch point sort of just behind the front axle. I mean, what an absolute horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf. Near seconds. took longer to crash it than to rescue it. And then that loaf whipped around, a little smack on the articulation point, <laughs> breaking the ice off it just in case. And then see, he gets down, but he doesn't touch the floor, just in case I was playing the floor's lava, which I'm not, so he can get down. And yep, I mean last time when I jumped down on my own, Frank ended up upside down, but jumping with the loaf ended up right way. I'll admit, I did kind of bury the front end in the uh, the ground quite a bit. And it, it was stuck in there pretty well. And then we're going for a, uh, a swimming test, but the reason I'd done it, but the reason why I came back with this uh, maintenance trailer and all the rest of it, you can see the loaf there, give it a little judo flip, which was obviously on purpose, because I wanted to uh, see if I can rescue this truck when it's got all these maintenance add-ons and the roof rack. So, loaf digs in, finds a little loaf hole, which is not the easiest on this beach. It is a pretty rocky, hard surface beach, but, I don't know, probably found a little rock to wedge behind his wheels or something. Here she comes, that's what she said. And then again, just an absolutely goddamn horse. That's right. Uh, yeah, for the swimming test, the reason why I came back with the maintenance trailer and all the rest of it is because this thing uh, does sit pretty high and the snorkel goes right up to the uh, 
the cab at the rear as well because like I said if I'm going in now imagine if the snorkel's at the front You'd probably be drowning about now where you get a little bit extra um, but yeah we're taking damage however about now it sort of levels off so 35 damage blah 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 uh, obviously taking pretty big hits but it's once it goes over like 80 is when the game's kind of forces you to have a stalled engine but before then and yeah that's why I wanted to keep going because the first time I tried it I obviously ran out of engine um, so yeah brought maintenance trailer and the or oh, maintenance add-on and the, uh, the roof rack thing so every time it was damaging the trailer uh, the engine enough I could quickly fix it keep driving didn't quite fully fix it there but it doesn't really matter because in the end it obviously got to the point 64 damage but then when I fixed it, it just stayed installed. So I assume, like, game-wise, it realised it made it to, it made it deep enough. It's definitely what she said. But yeah, that was a pretty good uh, attempt at crossing there. It's one of the trucks that's kind of got pretty far. Brought it back again. Is this one that glitched a little bit? Yeah. Well, I did dive it off the cliff, and it did fall on its wheel uh, on its side. And I did go for another rescue, mainly because now I'm wedged up against the cliff. I was curious, like. This will be a bit more difficult because it can't now just freely flop back to its wheels. And the loaf, he is trying, bless him. Digging around some loaf holes, but only what needed to be done. Scoot him over to these rocks. See, and again, other vehicles, the wheels are too big. They wouldn't use this little, it's a little tiny rock ledge as a ledge, but you see, the loaf is a ledge. A legend. Uh, yeah, and then now. Well, for like another water crossing test, really, or fully, fully prepared to cross the water. That's why we've got a scuba loaf on board. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit awkward fitting on the roof. You can kind of the best in the end I did was like hook the rear tires over the back and then have a winch to the front of the loaf, so he's kind of leaning backwards. And the reason why I normally cross here with all the vehicles anyway, other than I like head into this island, but the reason I've chose this line specifically is because it appears to be like the most shallow route across this uh, river and yeah obviously sometimes you get to about where I am now probably a little bit truck length back and uh, you stall and then I use the loaf to do the zombie winch whereas in this case again one of the few vehicles actually drove over there so it didn't even uh, need to do like the say the Voron grad trick where the front floats and it can kind of tiptoe its way over this thing is just tall enough and climbing up here the loaf did fly off the back probably for weight distribution reasons He's uh, pretty knowledgeable about this stuff. And then, yeah, you can see my Hummer. Not only one stuck in the rock, that speck you can see in the distance, that is not a UFO. That is an identified flying Hummer. That is an IFH. And then, yeah, jumped off here. Obviously, somehow, another loaf just magically knew where to place himself. Took one for the team. Helped me, uh, help the truck roll back to its wheels, but again. He's a professional, he starts, even though he is drowning, because his snorkel's underwater. Which is ironic, really, isn't it? And if anything, that's where it'd shine. But, he's a scout. He's got his roof rack, he fixed himself. Attempt number two, fired a winch out, made it back to his wheels. His mate's joining in. Sticks the landing, has a look around. Starts first time every time. And voila. Loaf's rescued. And yeah, climbing up this mountain. It took, well, you can see, it was basically like this speed and whatever all the way up, which is fine. It didn't tip as I'm coming up to the mountain, which is nice. But then when I was getting up to here, which I kind of figured would be the case, um, I'm going to be able to get the front wheels to the top. And then, yeah, I'm going to kind of get beached, which, given the length of the vehicle, beaching was always going to be an issue. It just is. You can't really avoid it with a vehicle this long unless you just had banks of wheels running all along the bottom. So, uh, yeah, long story short, did a bit of a manoeuvre, kind of got over near this antenna, did a winch from the back of the truck to the antenna just so I could scoop my back end around a bit more diagonally so I could approach the, uh, the peak of the mountain this way. And, yeah, it was awkward, but we made it. I'm going down the other side of the hill, I do like to attack this tree. Most vehicles just, the snow's too deep and awkward, it slows you down too much. You're only talking like Zig 605R, P16, 
clobs may you know like the big stuff's gonna kill this tree uh, yeah you can see the tree felt it it doubled over and then yeah attempt number two tried a, I don't know a different gear I think and yeah we killed it which is good and I did I'd already rolled down this hill but it was a bit of a crap one so I reversed up it and yeah I think this one went better which you can see it keeps trying to like roll you know like one end's fatter than the other so it doesn't want to roll straight but then I started adding a bit of banana steering and it's going pretty well you know, I ordered some bananas the other day like brand newies the first one I opened it didn't have a mark on it on the outside the inside it was absolutely nailed I always get worried as well for some reason when I'm opening a banana that a spider's going to come out of it but yeah this just I don't know I saw him beat the shit out of it so yeah one banana down um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> forget about uh, bananas. In conclusion, obviously we're going to get the vehicle. You get it kind of on the game anyway. It doesn't suck as much as I thought it was going to. Obviously, on these new phases, it's like there's a lot of rocks around and all the rest of it. And I think this thing does trip up on them a bit and all the rest of it. So do quite a lot of vehicles, really. Um, yeah, but it's all right. It's got its moments. Money-wise, by the way, fully done up. It's about 266 grand. That might be the new most expensive vehicle in the game or if not pretty high up there that's what she said uh yeah that description just basically says i don't know something about diffs and blah 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 one of the few vehicles to exist in the world and uh yeah that's about it really that's that one in the bag uh worth getting and giving it a little go but that's about it for today i hope you enjoyed i hope that helps thanks for watching get yourself a loaf because he's a beast and i'll be back soon